So I don't I want to do a video on um, these uh, graphing ones. I know a lot of people have trouble with them. So um, this is homework six problem seven, as you can see there. And so the idea is that you're looking at this graph to find out um, you can get y's, y values and slopes by looking at the graph. Because if you're looking for the slope or m prime of x, then you just calculate the slope of this, which is looks like it's going over. 20, 40, it's going over 50 and down, 20, 40, 60, 80, 90. So that one's going over over 50 and down 90, and this one's going over 50 and up 90. So it would be, um, so essentially M prime of 0 through 50, if you will, if that makes sense is going to be negative negative um, nine fifths because now you have fifty and m prime of um, from fifty on to hundred is going to be positive nine fifths. Okay, so let's see where I'm getting that negative nine fifths, positive nine fifths, and of course m so like m of 50 would be um, 10, right? Because you're talking about y values now. Or m of 20 would be 60. So depending on whether you look at the prime or the the um, just plain function determines on whether you look at the slope or the um, y value. So likewise over here, um, n prime of 0 through 50 is going to be over 20, 40, 50, over 50, up 20, 40, 60, 70. So over 20, I'm sorry, over 50, up 70. Over 20, up 70. So that'd be two sevenths. And that's n prime of 0 through 50. And um, if we go back to here, n prime of from 50 on is going to be over 50 and up uh, 30. So that would be positive 3 fifths. Okay, so what we're looking for is um, the derivative of h to be equal to negative 1.8. So h prime, first of all, and h is n of m. So h is n of m. Whoops, ah, sorry. h of x is equal to n of m of x which means h prime of x is going to be equal to n prime of m of x times m prime of x. So we're just using the chain rule there. And we want that to be equal to negative 1.08. Okay, so since it's negative, the only notice the only negative values here are this guy. So we need m prime. So this right here, um, we need x to be between, what is that, between 0 and 50. So first of all, we need x to be between 0 and 50 because of that. And then, um, so the second question is, which one of these do we want? So if you multiply negative 9 fifths times 2 sevenths, you will get negative 18 over 35, um, which is not negative 1.08. And if you multiply negative 9 fifths times 3 fifths, you'll get negative 27 over 25, which is negative 1. So we want this one here. 
So we want m prime to have 50 through 100 in it, which seems impossible at first because of this. But remember, what's going into m prime is m of x. So that means we want m of x to be um, greater than 50, but less than 100. OK, so then we go back to the um, chart and, and we ask ourselves, where is m of x bigger than 50? So m of x is right here. 50 is right about there. Right, oops, yeah, right across here. Um, that means I need either something before lower than 30 or higher than, uh, say, 70. So lower than 30 or higher than 70. So I come back here, and it looks like it would have to be lower than 30. So we'll pick a number like, say, 20. Go back in here. If we place 20 in there, hopefully we did all this right. And sure enough, it's right. And notice there's a range here. You could have done um, you could have done 10, and it would have been okay. And you could have done probably one actually. I think as long as you're above zero. Oops, I didn't check it, did it? Yep. Let's see how high up we can go. I think. 30 might be the limit. I don't know if it'll take 30, because I don't know if that is. Nope, 30 is too big. So it looks like maybe, how about 29? Is that too big? Yep. Uh, maybe 25. Ah, so 25 is probably about the biggest one. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, hopefully that made sense. Let me do another one of these graphing ones. This one's um, this one's a little bit easier because you're not working backwards, you're just evaluating. So this says evaluate f of g of x, the derivative of that, at 15. So what we're really looking for is, can I make this a little smaller? It's too small. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, let's see if we look at both at the same time. Oh well. Okay. So what we're looking for is Um, f of g of x, take the derivative of that, okay? So f of g of x, and we want to take the derivative of that. So that would be f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And we want to evaluate that at 15, so what we're really looking for is f prime of g of 15 times g prime of 15. So really what we need to do is figure out what g of 15 is and g prime of 15 to start with. So go back to the chart and g is this guy. So g of 15 would be right here, halfway between 0 and 30, which would be right there, which would be halfway between uh, 30 and 60. So I'm guessing that would be like 45 right there. So that's 45. And then g prime of 15 is just the slope of this thing, which is just 1. So g prime of 15 is 1. So then let's plug in down here. So we got f prime. Now g of 15 is 45. So we put a 45 in there. And g prime of 15 is 1, so this is times 1. So now we just got to find out what f prime of 45 is. So we go back over here. Um, 45 would be right here. And so we're just talking about that slope right there. 
Looks like it's over one, two, three, up two, so that'd be two thirds. So go back over here, two thirds. Let's check it just to make sure we don't wreck it. Two divided by three. Yay. Okay, so that's the homework. That's how you work the graph and things. It's really helpful to write out what you're looking for, then go back to the graph and try to find it. So we'll give that a shot, see if that makes sense, and let me know if you have any questions. Um, oops.